My name is Bill Tennis, and I'm with faculty from the North American Institute. We're here today with Jill, who was involved in a motor vehicle accident six months ago where she was hit from uh, the rear, and she's had some persistent discomfort at the junction between her neck and upper back, the CT junction. We're going to be evaluating Jill in terms of her movement in this area uh, and looking at her positions of the uh, vertebral as well as the costal region to identify which is the structure that is at fault. Jill's presenting complaints are those that uh, are worse with working on a computer when she is doing any prolonged work with her upper extremities and uh, she feels better when she's at rest and uh, has somebody stretch her neck and does traction to it. Jill is 36 years old and as we know that as individuals get a little bit older they tend to get a little bit stiffer in this area so we're going to be wanting to observe for any specific changes as they are related to aging as well. We're first going to assess the vertebral levels and uh, for positional faults I'm going to place my thumbs on the transverse processes of C7 and T1 trying to get a sense of whether or not there's anything that feels like it's more prominent on one side more so than the other. After we've done that, we've identified any differences, I'm going to ask Jill to go ahead and bend her head forward for me, straight down, and look to see that the, the transverse processes moves up, move up, come on back, and then into extension, come down, good, and they approximate one another, and then when she rotates her head to the right, I should get a sense of the lowest, uh, the subspinous process of the level that's moving uh, is going to move moving to the left. And coming back and do the opposite side and just feeling for the motion of uh, spinous processes. After she's done her active movements, we'll do some passive intervertebral movements. I'm just going to lower the table a little bit, Jill. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to then come around. I'm going to hold the C7 level and I'm going to feel for movement of the C7 as I take her into flexion, palpating the interspinous space between C7 and T1. See whether there's motion through here. Then I'm going to take her into extension and feel for motion as the spinous processes approximate one another. And then again, I'm going to palpate for movement as I rotate her one direction and when I take her into side bending that same direction, looking for that combined movement. Biomechanical assessment of this area, as we know, combined movements of rotation and side bending occur to the same side. I'm now going to take a look at the first and second rib as it attaches into the manubrium in the sternum. I'm going to identify the bases of the manubrium by coming along with my thumbs and identifying the attachment where I know the first rib will be coming in towards the sternum to the manubrium. I'm then going to follow down towards the apex, my bases and my apex. The apex where the uh, angle of Louis is between the manubrium and the sternum is where the second rib will come in. So I'm feeling for differences in terms of the anterior and posterior position of both the first and second rib. And then I'm going to look at the ability of Jill. When she takes a deep breath, I'm going to place one hand anteriorly and one posteriorly. I want to get a sense of the superior and anterior movement of those ribs. And then with expiration, the posterior and inferior movement of those ribs. I'm feeling one side compared to the other. I'm going to have you turn around, Jill, on the table for me. And I'm also going to identify the first and second rib as they come into T1 and T2. And I'm going to get a sense of how things are positioned here as well from posterior onto the ribs and I'm going to ask Jill to just go ahead and tilt her head down first, chin towards the Adam's apple, getting a sense of the movements of the ribs with active movements of the neck and come back and then extend back, good, getting a sense of whether or not the ribs are moving in the direction anteriorly with the roll uh, with flexion and posteriorly with a posterior roll with extension. We've identified that Jill has a stiff segment that doesn't extend very well between T1 and T2. Jill's been cleared for uh, manual therapy. There's no contraindications for mobilization or manipulation. 
we've discussed with her the benefits of manipulating the upper thoracic spine uh, in order to improve the mobility and hopefully reduce her symptoms. She's agreed to proceed with the technique. I'm going to do a manipulation of T1 on T2, uh, a gapping manipulation. Uh, we have multiple ways of doing this, but uh, probably the easiest way, especially in the upper thoracic spine, we're going to do a technique where we do a thrust in, with Jill having raised her hips into a bridging position so that I can get a good fix on the upper uh, segments to be able to manipulate. And so what I'm going to ask Jill to do first is I'm going to ask you to cross your arms like so, like so Jill, the upper one coming across the top. I'm going to have Jill roll towards me to the side. I'll identify the segment that I'm going to be manipulating. It's T1, it's T2. I'm going to come and place my hand in the pistol grip position. Come back onto my hand there, Jill. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to first have you take a breath in for me. Take a breath in. I'm just going to do a pre-manipulated hold. Now let your air out. Are you okay with that much pressure on there? Okay, not yet. Okay, not yet. Okay, and if you can do that one more time, let your air out again. I'm going to give you a little mini, mini thrust here. Push like that, okay? Mm -hmm. And then in just a second, I'll have you do the same thing again. I'll ask you to bridge up, and as you let the air out, and then I'm going to give a little bit of push on it as, you, as the air is out. Okay. okay. Okay, breathe in for me. And let your air out, and raise your bottom up as you do that. Lift up. Good. And you go quick in, and push in there. And come on out. Okay? Good. Okay, mm -hmm. Good. Let's have you go ahead and sit on up. Okay. And we'll reassess the, the motion again. Go ahead and bring your head forward for me. Good. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Now come on back and tip your head back. Extend back. Good. And the vertebral segment seems to be moving a lot better now. Okay. Does it feel okay in that position? Yeah, it felt better. Okay. Good. 